to the switch? Sure. Right. Uh, yeah, because you, you just I sat there last time. Great. <laughs> Um, hey Todd. Hi Mark. Uh, hey everyone. Thanks for lunch. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> you. That was really good. I hope you all had lunch as well. Um, uh, are the flowers good? Are we, are we kind of hidden? We're good? Okay, great. Um, happy Valentine's Day. Happy uh, Valentine's Day. So, uh, so welcome back. Uh, uh, we took a little bit of a lunch break, and now we're, we're here to, uh, to keep the conversation going. Hopefully, it can take us a little further into this kind of conversation that we're having, uh, this two-person theater conference, talking about art and aesthetics and practice. Um, and uh, this, uh, this hour, we're going to talk about um, individual artists, playwrights, solo artists. Um, a couple of reminders for folks who might be watching. Uh, feel free to uh, send us some comments or questions. Uh, you can do so at any time during, uh, during the, um, the broadcast, I guess, is the right word, right? Uh, uh, the live stream. Uh, so, so feel free and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at those uh, uh, if, uh, if there's comments that you'd like to share. Uh, so that, um, do you want to tell folks about the May Day Challenge? Sure. Um, hi again. So uh, for those of you who are just joining us, um, this is uh, for Mark and myself, Todd London. This is a continuing conversation that we've tended to have behind the scenes and in our lives together in the field over many years. But we really wanted to focus on the artistic conversation and we are doing it publicly, not because we want to spout off in front of the world, but in a way to create a structure for us to have that conversation and also to generate other such conversations. So our hope is that you will pick up the, the gauntlet, the <laughs> chalice, <laughs> the idea, and have private or public <laughs> conversations with your friends and colleagues um, really about the art of the theater and not about business and not about survival and not about field issues and so on. So we're issuing a May Day challenge to, uh, for the art part and you can write to the art part at howlround.com if you want to commit to having such a conversation in any context a living room a church basement a theater um, a on the subway a bar we were going to try and do that we couldn't do that and um and uh, sign up for it so we can at the end of today we can read out the names of the people who have uh, picked up the challenge, and you can continue to sign up for it through HowlRound over the weeks to come. Awesome. Um, shall we dive in? Yeah. Let's Anything do else? it. Great, great reminder. Uh, send comments, questions, uh, if you have them. Uh, and so they can go to Twitter, at, uh, hashtag HowlRound, or the art part at HowlRound.com, or on the Facebook page of HowlRound. This is the this is the auction. <laughs> this is the this auction. Is the exactly. It's like the the pledge drive. Um, so so uh, so when we last when we were last together before we took a break, we were talking about uh, group creation and ensemble work, and um, and uh, and 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 so so you know, one of the things that we have in common is that we've both kind of uh, dedicated part of our lives to supporting others in their work to kind of help. Other artists, other arts organizations, kind of, um, kind of thrive. Yeah. And and I I did that uh, at the Network of Ensemble Theaters, and you did that at uh, at New Dramatis. And so, the key here, where I'm going, is like you know, so so we started with this group conversation around ensembles and my time at Net. And so as we think about individuals, you know, so so so. Help me out with some terminology here, <laughs> okay? Because you know, I, I think like part of it is like we we playwright, talk about playwright, right, right, yeah, okay. but you know like but, yeah. but like like solo performer, uh -huh. right? Who can also be playwright, yeah. yeah. Like 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 help it just kind of contextualize <laughs> and, and just kind of define like as we talk about oh. individual, like what are we what are we meaning here? Well, okay, so um, unlike Mark, who came into net 
with some terminology around ensemble and devised and practice and so on, um, I, I actually have given a lot less thought to what a playwright is in terms of how would you define that or solo performance. I guess, um, by contrast, I would say that um, what we're talking about in the next half hour or so is people whose primary um, artistic operation happens uh, at least largely in solitude. So, I mean, I'm interested, you know, Daniel Alexander Jones, who's a, a wonderful defier of e every category we could throw up, um, but who I met first really as a playwright at New Dramatis, um, I saw him lead a workshop for s our students at the University of Washington School of Drama last year, and he began a solo performance workshop by saying, you actually never create performance alone. Mm -hmm. Solo performance is a misnomer. Um, yeah. You're always making with somebody, somebody who came before, somebody you're in conversation with, your colleagues, your collaborators. Even if you're up there alone, you're never alone. Um, and I'd say that's true of a playwright, too. I mean, why would anyone become a playwright if they wanted to sit in the room alone as opposed to being a poet or a novelist where you literally don't have to interact with the people who are reading your work or people who read it to them? Um, so I would say it's primarily but not exclusively work that is done alone um, where voice is, and I'm just making this up, Great. but voice is articulated um, by a person who's making the choices about how that voice gets articulated. So we were talking about group work before and the difference, say, between the voice of the Worcester Group or Double Edge or Cornerstone or June Bug, you know, that who you're in collaboration with is going to determine the company's voice. Not so with a playwright. The playwright is putting words on the page and ultimately that voice will come through in someone else's tongue and teeth and mouth and uh, literal voice. But So I think that's it. I mean, I think about, I guess, y your question throws me a little. That's good. Oh, good. Uh -huh. I guess what I think about it is, is that playwriting is an exercise of individual freedom. Yeah. And collective work or collaborative work is a work of um, uh, making society together. Interesting. That's beautiful. Yes. I mean, it's so, so, so like, in that, in that individual freedom. I took system. a long time to get to that. I know, but it was, but it was like, <laughs> so glad that we got there. That's really great. I mean, like, that, that's a keeper. Uh, um, but I think it's so, so, like, in this conversation about aesthetics, you know, so, like, like in, the, in the group, like, there's this collective aesthetic. And, and, you know, we talked about earlier about, like, how process kind of, like, my belief is that process leads to kind of aesthetics. And, and in the individual freedom, yet never alone, like where, where do, where do like aesthetics, where's like the, the, the like, like I, I, yeah. Well, this is, okay, so this is sort of around your question. I mean, the, um, so when I really fell in love with playwriting uh -huh. was actually after I got to New Dramatis. And, let me, and I'll tell you why and how. So, I mean, I'd always, you know, I, I fell in love with the plays I saw and read as a kid kind of thing. Um, and the plays that I did, that thing about like being in Midsummer Night's Dream or directing Tartuffe or whatever, those are really powerful experiences because the language is in your body. But when I got to New Dramatis in 1996, there's a, a great library of all the current manuscripts mm -hmm. of the writers who, ex who enjoy seven-year residencies there. And then there's an archival, sh there are archival shelves of past New Dramatis. And the first thing I did was I read my way through each of the current writers' wow. bodies of work. And what I didn't really understand is 
how voice develops over time, how concerns are articulated over time, how bodies of work grow. And so when you talk about methodology or practice mm -hmm. over time within ensembles, in a way, playwrights have a leg up because they are doing that from play to play to play. One play might be an answer to an unfinished question in the play before, mm -hmm. or it might be a redirect from the play before. Um, it depends on who the artist is. But there was something about encountering the work of then, I think it was 43 or 45 playwrights, as it had been played out over three or four or five plays, suddenly you see something that we never are um, privileged to see in the theater, mm -hmm. which is a body of work altogether. Yes. And therefore a set of concerns in full flower, really. And immediately everything about the way I thought about theater changed because I wasn't interested in individual projects anymore, only the project of voice and imagination and self over time. It's, it's fascinating because so much of the, I mean, like, so much of work is project based. You know, like like we're going to bring on this playwright to do this project, or we're going to fund this project, right? And so 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 you know, in the, in that where we started this conversation around sustainability, it, you know, um, I don't know. There's a question here as much as I'm I'm just kind of just kind of stewing on body of work, yeah, and how how um, how this the individual artist has the does have that leg up because. At a certain level, you can um, you can just kind of make on your own. Yeah, you know. But 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 like, but what about so so like you're you're looking at these at these scripts, but where do, what about like product like the physicalization of that? Right. Like where does that fit in, in that <coughs> development of a practice? Well, I mean that's the. Um, that's going to be really dependent on opportunity, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Which is, um, I guess I want to go back a step before oh. I try and answer that. Because one of the things you said made me remember an earlier comment in our conversation about groups, which is you work with the people you love. Mm -hmm. And there's something about, so I, I do on HowlRound this Lover's Guide to American Love Playwrights them. series. Yes. Thank you. And I think what it is for me, it really is an act of love, but it isn't about projects. It's about the person, the artist, who is um, revealed through the work over time. So just where, uh, whereas you're working with Cornerstone for however many years, or another ensemble, or your collaborator, Ashley Sparks, for example, and you're working out of a personal, interpersonal love that's also an artistic sharing, I think um, the pivot that I experienced that I kind of wish for the theater in general to get out of this project by project mentality is pivoting to loving the writer rather than loving or disliking the play. Yes. And um, and you, and so this goes to your next question, like what happens with production? Well, part of it is that playwrights wait so long for production that unless you're August Wilson and your work is in um, circulation all the time and then the new thing comes out, you're, there's so much space that nobody can see your body of work. And it isn't, maybe it is in the play the way that a company's body of practice is in a production. But for a playwright, um, it's harder to perceive it because then there's the complication, the schizophrenia of playwriting, which isn't true for solo performers, which is I write something and I give it to other people to do. Yes. Yeah, and but which, you know, in, in this conversation about aesthetics, like that is for me like a big question of you write this world 
and others will interpret it. And it could be, <laughs> it could be not what you wanted. Right. Right. You know, and so, so like in that, like, yeah, like, 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 like I'm just trying to understand, and, and just like to be transparent, uh, um, you know, Todd and I have had conversations about individuals, and, and, and I will often kind of take more provocative uh, uh, stances as on, on individual kind of writers, partly because my brain just kind of lives in provocation. In the collective. And provocation. <laughs> in, in the collective, yeah. <laughs> and, and so, like, uh, uh, part of it is, like, admittedly, like, it, it's, it, it, in some ways, it's, it's so, like, um, I just don't know how. So I'm, there's a, also like a fascination. Oh, right, right, right. Of, of well, I share your I don't know a little bit because I'm not a playwright. My writer self mm -hmm. is a novelist and an essay writer because I couldn't stand. That's such a private part of yeah. my thinking that to give it to people to do it to fuck yeah, up yeah. or to even make brilliant <laughs> is anathema yeah. to me. Um, so I think, so there must be something in playwrights, and I, I'm, I'm debasing this on experience, that actually prizes the society of others, the act of making theater, because they aren't, strictly speaking, just writers. Yeah. They are makers of events. They are creators of blueprints or frameworks or maps or however you want to metaphorize it mm -hmm. for actual events that happen between us when we're live together in a room. And actors and directors and designers have other skill sets mm -hmm. that enable them to bring out things that are latent or um, nascent, mm -hmm. and some playwrights that I've seen, they really just want, I mean, it's kind of the David Mamet thing, which I pretty well despise, which is like, uh, the actors don't need to do anything but say my work and play the action. Yes. You know, but that's not just what actors do. And then there are writers who you see it, it's so beautiful, it's like they love nothing more than to get in the room with other people and hear the words and gather people around their ideas or experience because those people can get where they ultimately want to go is to the audience. Mm -hmm. So it is a kind of weird and um, schizophrenic work. Yeah. But I would imagine that most cases it comes out of a real desire to make change in the world, the kind that you can't clock if people are reading your novel in private, and that theater is the thing they love. I, I don't know, I feel speculative about okay. this. I mean, what do you, wha what's your question behind the question? Because I feel in a way that you're, um, you're distrustful of playwriting. I, I kind of <laughs> feel like I am. No, thank you, thank you for saying that, because there is something, there is something, uh, so, so my a, a provocative statement that I have made to Todd in the past is that I, I feel like playwrights, um, I kind of tend to view playwrights as as editorialists, not in, not in any kind of like I, not in anything dismissive about it, but 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 it's so centered around a an individual. So there's something for me like there's something um, I think about the Bible, and there's something. <laughs> <laughs> I never think about the Bible, so <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> so I think about the Bible, and um, there's this text that we will that we will make something of. We will interpret. We will live out. We will we we can. You can take this thing and play the say the lines, and you know maybe do the actions. You know, what I mean? and, and there's something. Um, I think part of part of it's not it's not distress, but it's almost kind of uh, reverent, like like in an odd sort of way. Like it, it's it's such a mystery, in in kind of in, in kind of religious kind of sense for me that that of like, I don't. The, 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 this authoring of of scripture, sure. So you see plays in a way as scripture to be passed on rather than. 
um, seeds for inquiry to be joined? Uh, I, I think it does. I mean, I think it's scripture at its best does both. Yeah. So. So, huh. So we're different people in the world, all of us, all of us. Mm -hmm. And some people do their best exploration mm -hmm. in privacy, right? Yeah. And they go really deep. And there's something about writers and writing that is kind of the ultimate in individual freedom mm -hmm. because you give permission to your talent to find its fullest expression. Mm -hmm. And then there's something about us as community members and people in a society who... Um, want to tell others and there are something about some of us who want to share with others and then have them contribute their best contribution, right? Their talent and permission. So actors, for example, have given themselves permission to spend their lifetime in feelings and entering other bodies and identities. It's a different kind of freedom and a different kind of permission but how beautiful to put it together. But I don't think of that as scriptural or dogmatic in a way, and maybe this is not what you're saying, or editorializing, because it's really just like, when do other people enter your process? Mm -hmm. And that's why there are playwrights who work with companies. There totally. are playwrights yes. who bring things to companies and then rewrite others who mm -hmm watch the work for a month or two months or s 10 months and then go away and write. And to be clear, like, like most of my, a, a big chunk of my life, artistic life, was working in that playwright, like yes. a player, a and writer you still working do. with the ensemble. Exactly. Mixed blood. So, yeah. yeah. So it's, 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 it's very central. It, it occupies you're not a hater. No, I know all. that you're not, not a all. hater. Yeah, you know, and, but it, but it's the, the, I was kind of just kind of thinking about chewing on like when you talked about like individual freedom and kind of and then this more democratic view, uh, uh, right? Which was like like you right. know like the, the solo uh, artist versus the the collective. Right. And 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 there's something kind of cool in that, and I think um, I think I think part of it is is um, I I don't know if I hide in the in the um, in the group or if I just trust like I you know like like there's a there's a kind of um audacity of the in, the, the individual freedom is a scary and wonderful and yeah. brave it's totally thing. audacious yeah <laughs> you know no, in the way that odds. like yeah. I think truth be told is I think <laughs> in some ways like for as hard as collective creation goes it's also easier because like you're in a group full of people who have just right. like say like that is just crap and we should not do that or like no like let's go deep you know what i mean like like you're just well yeah but they're both impossible in their own ways aren't yeah. they i mean to get up every morning and feel that anybody gives a shit what you write especially when you're writing for a long period of time about something that nobody asked you to write about and nobody ever asks you or rarely asks <laughs> exactly. you to write about anything versus having to deal with people that you know only too well over only too long. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? And actually having to make society together. Yeah. So it is, it's like, it's like those are so hard. You know, I think a lot about this Anne Bogart thing, I think I've mentioned it to Mark, which is Anne Bogart says that every play we make or every production is um, we're creating a model for how society might be. She says it better than that. But it's like we're always modeling how to work together. I feel like the work of the playwright as a non-playwright is different. It's like, it's almost like the work of the playwright is to see how far our humanity can go mm. when free of all of those restrictions of actual people and actual bodies and then 
the work is to put it in actual people in actual bodies. Mm -hmm. And yet every playwright is different. So I'm aware totally. that as I'm, I'm talking about this, it's like Anna Devere Smith is a playwright, but she's using other people's words and intonations. You know, Robert Schenken is a playwright, you know, most notably writing from history. Lynn Nottage is a playwright who works in such different voices all the time. Totally. Um, and there are playwrights who write from themselves mm -hmm. in a naked way, mm -hmm. and playwrights who are deeply obscured in their work. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so like, it, it because like, so, 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 so like, because it's so, it can, it varies by individual, and there's so many individuals, and, you know, like, like, and you, you like, I'm curious about like practice and support and sustainability and deepening practice and how to um, the the individual, the the, hu the individual human being versus the the body of work. Yeah. Is there is there a question in that? <laughs> uh, I don't I don't know. Um, I guess. Like, are you supporting the individual? Yeah, yeah, are you, are no, you supporting, there is a question. Like, yeah. like, like Lynn Nottage, or you're supporting this artist who's done, and not that they're, they're in, not that they're different, you know what I mean? Like, like this is where it feels like I don't have the right so, Well, words. here's how I think okay. about it. So, and I don't know if this is your question or not. I think about the work of supporting playwrights as supporting the flowering of every unique being. Mm -hmm. Do you know? That and that is something that ha flowering, for example, isn't that's a word that I'm using, <laughs> is uh, something that happens over time. Mm -hmm. You know, so these guys, you know, open in a, a minute or a day or whatever, but are as unique beings in the world. We open over the course of whatever time we're given, um, as opposed to say group work, which is about the flourishing of our social beings to a certain mm -hmm. extent mm -hmm. and what we can do um, in society with one another. And at a certain point, playwrights enter that society as well when they give their plays to others to mm -hmm. do. Um, so I think about playwright support and playwright loving and looking at bodies of work as um, how is the writer um, flowering over time and I actually don't care about individual plays as much as I care about the making wow. of bodies of work. And so what that means that if you're um, a person, and now we're talking about Todd, we're talking about me, um, if you're a person that works with playwrights, what you care about is like making sure they go back to their desks, making sure that that body of work goes fine. You don't care about fixing or perfecting a play except as it's the expression of where they are at this moment in their lives. Mm -hmm. Do you know? And it's really different than being a curator or a producer and caring about the project. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I guess that's yeah, not yeah. answering. No, no, I mean, the, I, I think w this whole conversation, th this specific conversation for me is just kind of wrapping my brain around um, in this in this talk that's about aesthetics and practice trying to better understand ways to enter that examination and then i think like like things that have been really helpful are just like thinking about bodies of work is yeah. really useful thinking about kind of that 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 individual in society uh really useful as just you know as, as somebody who again works a lot with playwrights and plays and and loves it <coughs> And and at the same time, also it, it just slightly feels a little out of reach sometimes for me. Yeah. Uh, um, and like how to look at it, or or how to look at it to beyond just to play it, and then, and so when I look at a body of work, then in, you know, how to but make it. But it's so it. weird to me, Mark, that we're having this discussion because you are a person who surrounds yourself with. We were talking at lunch about a kind, if you don't mind my saying, a kind of free-floating ensemble of colleagues and friends that Mark has, um, that is a commitment to people's flourishing over time mm -hmm. and them their commitment to you. Mm -hmm. So that is, um, 
it's the same work, which is all of our work on this planet, which is where it is, feels to me like scripture or something, which is our, our job is to be the best of who we can be with the talents that we bring to the table, to give full permission to those talents and articulate them to the extreme and beyond if we can. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, I don't yeah. know where to even go with yeah. that. Yeah, no, I mean, but that, I, I, don't think, I think that's, I think you're right. Right, so, <laughs> no, no. Uh, 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 we do have two comments and one commitment, but we can get to that later. Do you want to? Great. Uh, wanna, I, I, uh, one one yeah. last thing before we switch to comments is that, um, it's fast. I mean, one of the things I marvel about you is like, is just like, you know, we started this conversation with, uh, with just love of the field and the form and, and the theater, the art, the art form, and uh, and it's so it's so great because like because one of the things that like, you're also an ensemble guy, like you are so collective, yeah. and 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 your love and support for the individual, and you you and and, and I. I, as I hear my these words coming out, I don't I don't at all want to paint a dichotomy or zero sum where this like right. this or that because I think you're the, you know that oh I just thought you were so. writing a Valentine to me <laughs> well that too <laughs> but but it's the um, but there's something because like even as you talk about the individuals you know you you're you're looking at it collectively sure and 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 the and that you kind of like um, are holding up the individual within the collective of of that. Um, Maybe there's a point there, maybe not. Uh, but the one thing that before we run out of time is I also want to talk about. So we've been talking about playwrights, but what about like the the solo creator, like the Dale Orlando Smith or the Luis Alfaro's or the Daniel Alexander Jones? But they're all playwrights. They're playwrights, but sometimes they write on their own bodies for yeah. their own voices. Yeah. And sometimes they write for other people. So and all should three we of look those. at that differently? Like, like in this conversation about how do we look at the work? How do we approach the work? How do we enter this work? Is there mm. a difference? Mm. Does, it, does it matter? I think now's the time to turn to our <laughs> comments. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, we, uh, we have one from Lisa Shattuck. Hi, Lisa. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and dialogue. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for listening. Jeez. Uh, Ensemble-wise, there is a magic that comes from working, dreaming alone, and sharing it with collaborators the next day to develop it together. There's an immediacy to that, too. Yeah. yeah. But I wonder if the process of a playwright working alone and creating a finished product for others to translate is a system that is outdated now. Okay. <laughs> He's going to make me answer. Thank you. I, you know... I, um, again, I don't, um, I don't think that a playwright f creates a finished product. They create a roadmap. I mean, Rand McNally creates maps, but they lead you places, and the maps change. Um, I think, yeah, there's a kind of sense that, oh, playwriting is old-fashioned, but it's actually the same thing. I mean, I guess this goes to Mark's last question too, which is, in my belief, and this is where I'm just like holding forth, we create theater, which whether it's created for play, by playwrights, whether it's created in rooms by ensembles, by solo performers, by singers, improvisationally or whatever, theater is always about us being in a room together in the end with performers and spectators or performer, uh, somebody watching and somebody doing. And the event is always the space between us. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the, I, this is my um, resistance to the implication that playwright is outmoded or old fashioned, is the goal is the same, which is to get us in the room together. Maybe the sense of, text as a univocal thing feels a little old-fashioned, but playwrights actually write for other people to speak in yeah. many voices. So there's a sort of dissemination of voice mm -hmm. that happens among playwrights. So I think we're all working at the same thing, which is what Mark and I are trying to do here, which is like, what is happening between us today in this space and what translates or carries to you, and what does your presence do to alter us? 
Mm -hmm. Because we're all engaged in the same things which are defining our humanity and defining our community. Mm -hmm. Again? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Lord Lori McCants. Hey, welcome back, Lori. Uh, I'm remembering an amazing weekend of Thornton Wilder's body of work at Actors Theatre of Louisville's Classics in Context back in maybe 1997. Uh, each piece performed or read or discussed bounced off each other with such resonance, reverberating still for me. I'm encouraging theaters to consider such big undertakings for other living writers. Paula Vogel's body of work comes to mind. Shakespeare theaters do this, of course. And then there are other such uh, undertakings, I'm sure. But it's such a wonderful way to honor playwrights' body of work. And, and signature, you know, signature, signature theater, yeah. Profile is, uh, theater in Portland. Uh-huh. There are others, yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. Because then you can really totally. like your 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 the demand is to like look at everything. Yes. In a way that like, we when do you it with Shakespeare. Apart. I mean, you mentioned yeah. La Laurie mentions it. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Um, it's great. I mean, my dream is that you walk in a theater and somehow temporally it works mm -hmm. that before you get to the stage you have walked through two or three other pieces by the playwright whose newest work you're about to see that somehow you've absorbed that mm -hmm. so you can see that work. You know, you can do that when you're home with a novel. Yeah. You can read, you know, L Laurie Moore or Philip Roth or Toni Morrison and you can go to the shelf and see the other nine books by them that you read before. It's interesting, like, 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 I think about like the, the Nobel Prize, you know, like, like, uh, like we're gonna look at a body of work and just kind of lift that up and how, you know, yeah. How to, how to continue to do that. Uh, I have one last question because we're running out of time and there's yeah. so, so much here. Um, writers, but I just forgot it. Oh. <laughs> you know, I have, a, I have a theory that I'm making up on the spot right now. Uh, is, you know, so, so I feel like in, in my question, kind of like leading this kind of this conversation and maybe kind of maybe partly kind of in Lisa's like, I, I don't at all hope that I, I put you kind of in any kind of defensiveness or having to defend this writers. Because like I said, I, I love writers. I, I came to this because of individual voices and sure. reading those scripts and being transported into these worlds and, sure. and, and, and it's the best. Uh, and I wonder about our, our, our kind of cultural, socio-political moment totally. where there's just this a distrust of other people. Right. And the idea that, that I'm entrusting an individual yeah. versus like a group that, that, you know, like, and not that the group is any probably less safe, truth be told, but, but I wonder if there's something in but that. But it's so weird to me that you're saying that at this moment. I get it because we are, especially when you say our play's editorials, because we're so worried about opinion, because opinion is like always in our face. But we also live in a moment where people are just gobbling down memoirs. Yeah. And plays are not memoirs. No. And they're not editorials. They are, again, they're dispersed, vocally dispersed objects. And so what is that? Is it a mistrust of the written word? Is it as opposed to something that's more fluid and not set? Is this why, I mean, I don't know if it's true, but it certainly felt true some a few years ago that improvisation is like really important at uh -huh. this moment. Um, I don't know. I do, I mean, I keep, I'm, I'm curious too about Lisa's Shattuck's question and wish you were here in the room with us too because I'd love to, know more about it. It's like, what is that distrust? Is it a distrust of typewriters? Do you know? <laughs> is it a distrust of <coughs> written word or expertise or something? I mean, yeah. you and I are sh living in that fear. We're sitting here trying to do everything we can to mitigate the fact that we're, we're like not experts. experts or we're no. like, and yet we still live our lives and we've done a lot of stuff. Yeah. We have things to say. Yeah. But we don't want anybody to take it as like anything. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> totally. But I feel like there's something like I, I think there's something in that. In this, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, like, and, and I, it, it's probably a much bigger thing that we're not going to unpack 
in the zero time that we have yeah. left. Um, but, but I do want to just kind of put that out there because maybe somebody will pick it up in another, uh, maybe d during the yeah. May Day Challenge. Yes, and we have one commitment, another commitment for the May Day Challenge. Who is that? A host of people Woo! in, that's Shireen in um, Detroit, Shireen and, and Jake, and uh, a host of people. So yay! Yay, yay, host of people! We'll call you out. We gotta keep a list so we can say at the end. So we're gonna be back in 19 minutes. 19 minutes. And we're gonna be talking about? Uh, civic impact, social engagement, community engagement. Civic, the aesthetics of civic, all that stuff you all just said. Thank you. <laughs> See you in a few. Bye.